today we're going to be building ourselves a dwarven kingdom which is perfect because i actually need to replenish all my resources that i used building up this entire castle over here if you guys missed the last episode check it out i'll put a card in the top right hand corner for all of you guys but i think it's about time that we start building in behind this doorway right here because i've got an amazing idea to really bring this build to life now i wasn't lying when i told you guys that i have used up all of the stone that i have inside of my entire storage room which is a little alarming but thankfully we'll be able to make it all back from the big dig that we're going to be doing for our dwarven kingdom and have i mentioned mud would be a really nice block to have in this pallet yeah because i don't got any of that either well it looks like we're starting today's episode off on literally nothing so i guess we better get to work and get things going but before we start the dwarven kingdom and the big dig if you haven't done so already please like the video because it really helps out the channel a lot and if you haven't done so yet and you're really enjoying these builds consider subscribing especially if you want to see this entire kingdom slowly build because what you're about to see is quite the big time lapse so without further ado let's get into it and let's get to digging As you guys can see resources are no longer an issue i have been bringing back a lot of the stone a lot of cobble and everything that i can possibly bring back to the base all the way back but every single one of these chests on this side are completely full and now i'm working on this side now let me fly on through here so i can give you guys a little bit of a better look into the dwarven kingdom but this is going to be the hallway into the depth of the kingdom and then we're going to be accessing the kingdom right down here except for one big big issue this still isn't big enough and i don't think we're deep enough on the sides just yet we probably will be going about five to ten blocks into the deep slate which isn't the worst because deep slate is a gorgeous building block but i also want to continue to keep pushing this wall back and these walls out further to create a little bit more space for what i have planned but let me get into a little bit of the doorway that I have planned for the giant door up here and kind of visualize a little bit better so you guys can see exactly what I'm going to be doing right here as we access the Dwarven Kingdom. And that's this door right here. I'm going to obviously make this a little bit more fitted into the Dwarven Kingdom. But if I shoot this right here, you'll notice it drops down, which I think would be perfect for the Dwarven Kingdom. And then all we would have to do is do the exact same thing and close it all up. So that's what I'm planning to add into the doorway right here in which I don't think we're going to have much of an issue fitting that in here. I think I can make this door as wide as I possibly need it to be. And I think about right here could most certainly be wide enough, but that's what I plan to do for the door. What do I plan to do all the way down here? Well, that's a little bit of a different story. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of reference photos that I'm looking at. Nothing is 100% accurate to what I'm going to be doing because obviously I'm just going to be freehanding this, but I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the inspirational photos that I have been looking at just so you guys can better visualize the project that I have in hand. In the first photo, the thing I really love about this one is it's got a central forge, which I think is extremely dwarven. I love the hammer. I love how big this whole area feels, and this is exactly what I want to try to achieve in this room. And for this second photo here, I kind of want to really touch on the fact that this is going to be a regional build, which means that this is going to be a build that we're going to be coming back to for multiple years on end in order to build this thing up to something to this scale. <laughs> 
So what am I talking about when I'm talking about regional builds? Well, that means I'm going to be putting multiple mega builds together to make a cohesive area. So take, for example, the Skull Clans, even though this is just the beginning of the Skull Clans and it has an origin point, which is the dragon here that has basically taken over this entire region. I do plan to obviously build forests, build more things than just the dilapidated factory here and the mob castle behind me. But I do plan to expand this region with a cohesive build uh, structure, basically, and continue to keep going forward. Another really good example of this is the Masa over here. This is the Mesa that I've been converting over to more of a lush green landscape. You can see that I have the seed vault over there in the distance. And I also have the giant ship bringing in all the floating islands over here as well. But the most underlining thing that I can pretty much say here by regional builds is they're going to all kind of be themed the same way. And they're going to be built up over time with a series of mega builds, just like our Dwarven Kingdom. And yes, that also means I will be expanding the city as well, because this is going to be a regional build too. I'm going to be expanding the city into a way, way bigger area. And I'm thinking a little bit of a utopian style, green city that basically works off of a lot of green foliage and solar systems and stuff like that and by solar systems i mean solar powered because i'm an idiot because if there's one thing that i've learned after having this world for four and a half years now with over ten thousand hours is if i'm just focusing on mega build to mega build and i'm setting my sights short well i'm going to be losing a lot of immersion and a lot of cohesiveness between my builds and that's not exactly what i want long term for this world because long term with this castle on the outside, not only did I integrate some pirates, so it goes really well with this island back here. And I'm going to be having a bunch of pirate ships and pirate themes going on around here. But it's going to create a nice cohesion between the pirates and the Dwarven Kingdom that I plan to build on the inside. So hopefully I've taught you a thing or two when it comes down to world building. But I've got a little bit more digging to do, so I'll see you guys in a bit. And by a bit, I realistically mean probably about four to five days. But, um, who's counting, right? That now brings us up to over 500,000 stone mined. We're now kicking at 3.2 million, which I'd say pretty decent. Every single one of these chests are full. I've been bringing them back to the base periodically, but more importantly, the dig is done. And let me show you guys a little bit of what I got planned for this whole dig. So I do want to keep this kind of fairly open. So I'm going to be having a door that kind of slides open here. That way we can walk down the staircase down here. I've got the middle section all like laid out. I've got some things laid out. Got these doors that are going to swing on open. A little bit of a landing. I'm going to have a cheeky little staircase right here. Going to bring this stuff down a little bit. Have a little bit of a lip here. Going to be putting in some pillars along the stone. Then I'll be placing in these pillars right here. Potentially putting in some giant statues as well. I think that's very dwarven. Meanwhile, we're going to be building up these bridges over here, bringing in a little bit of the spruce vibe inside of here. I think a nice like little bit of color would be nice. Got all the pillars laid out for that. And then right here as a central piece, I want to build a forge because of course, that's probably the most dwarven thing you could possibly do is build a forge. So I want to have a center point right here centered around central. Centra? Can I speak? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to have a forge right here. But I would like to have something coming out of the forge and dripping lava into the forge. So I don't know what that exactly is going to be just yet. A hammer could look really cool. A wolf head could look really cool. But I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing with this side of the wall first because I need to put a bunch of facades of some buildings for the Dwarven Kingdom back there and then down here. Well, I got my work cut out for me down there. 
I'm thinking black concrete might be really nice to kind of mess around with so I can create a, like a really deep effect but that's going to be the next phase that we're going to be working into also want to build up the redstone door behind us but now that we got all the digging out the way we can get back to building okay it's starting it's time to start up the dwarven kingdom at this point so what i'm going to be working on first is going to be doing the blacked out void effect down here to make it look like the dwarven kingdom goes down a lot more deeper into the depths and then we'll be working out the pillars here so i've got these guys as bigger pillars and i got my smaller pillars then of course i've got my big door that needs to be placed in here with the bridges that are going to go all the way across We'll start mapping out exactly how I want this peninsula to basically look the forge and how exactly we want the lava to go into the forge and what that thing is going to be and start working out a little bit of the design for this wall back here. So yes, there's going to be quite a bit of going on here, but I'm going to be first focusing all my attention towards the floor down here because I'm not exactly 100% sure what's going to work out here, but I'm thinking the black concrete will be a great place to start. So looking at this now, I feel like the black concrete might be a little bit too dark for the effect that I'm trying to pull off. So I want to give blackstone a try and I also want to give smooth basalt a try and I want to look at them side by side and make a little bit of comparison and figure out what we want to do next with the, uh, the bottom portion of this build. So looking at this now and thinking about it, I think blackstone is the clear winner for me. This is a little bit too light for me. This is a little bit too dark for me, but... I have an, an additional issue and I think mud would look really good here too. The only real big issue with that, and that's the fact that I have, well, about 15 mud to my name, but I think that this mud right here is honestly probably going to look the absolute best of all the blocks that we have down there. Time to decimate this mangrove swamp behind me. I've got about four. Yeah, four shulkers right now that I want to completely fill so I can kind of get a good idea of what the mud will look like. If I don't use it, that's okay because I can always use it for another project. Well, I think we found it. I think we know exactly what we're going with next and it's going to be mud, which I'm also very happy about, but also very sad about because mud, I just don't have any mud. But at least now we know what we're going to do down there. eight shulker boxes of mud later and i think that that's looking pretty dang good check it out decent but not as decent as it could be i need to get rid of all the torches and place down all the glass to make it a little bit more spawn proof so we're gonna start doing that next done got all the glass in place got all the all the other stuff in place don't have my hut on but check it out exactly what i was trying to go for now i'm going to start mapping out these bridges getting these pillars in place and doing the the archways in between all this but i think this turned out really really nice and it kind of creates the exact effect that i was looking for so i'm thinking for these bridges i'm just going to use the gravel so i can mark out exactly where my pillars are going to be going on the inside bits and then i'm going to primarily build this all out of stone and start mapping out the archways and the spacings between each pillar and while we're at it, I'm also going to be doing the side bits here too. So I can bring down these pillars as well. Going all the way down to the ground here, as you guys can see, basically. And then I'll do the exact same things with these guys. Except these ones are probably going to come out a lot wider and work their way all the way up to the top. So now that I got my gravel coming down here, I'm just going to place my stone in here. And then I'm going to be placing stone in here. And then I'm going to have my andesite walls going right up the middle here. I think that'd be a nice look for their bridge here. Progressing a little bit further with the bridges over here. I think they're coming along really nicely. I've got one of them fully refined, almost to a point where I'm really happy with it. 
I've kind of refined out and smoothed out this um, this archway right here in comparison to this archway over here, which is obviously very blocky. And then on the underside, I've been adding in little bits and pieces of the walls. So you guys are able to actually incorporate a little bit of shading and shadowing. I will be replacing the bottom section of this a little bit more with like the stuff that we did on the outside. And I'll show you guys exactly what we did on the outside. So you guys can visualize that and visualize and visualize. I'm making a new word. So just like we did on the exterior bridge right here, where everything has like tough granite or not granite, but more of like the tough and everything like that, just to kind of shade everything out a bit better using uh, the cracked stone bricks, the normal stone bricks the tough blocks and kind of creating that uh that nice little shading effect that we got going on out here is exactly what i plan on doing on the inside of the castle as well i got a nice little design on the side of this bridge right here i think it's going really well created a little bit more depth goes it down into the depths of the actual like chasm that we got going on here placing in a little bit of this spruce and i'm absolutely loving the color that it's adding to this whole room here a little bit the only weird thing is, is that I'm going to have to like probably work this area up a little bit more. Maybe do something special with this whole area. But obviously I can't have this whole area flat. Um, I don't really have a spot to like kind of like land up in here. But having that little bit of spruce, bringing in the earthy tones with the stone and stuff like that, I think works out really well for this room. I might have a little bit of a plan for what I could do right here to light up these uh, central bits. Although this might not actually work the way I want it to work, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Putting these cauldrons in here, I can create some braziers. I could help get rid of these torches right here and light up the area a bit better. So bringing this guy up on obviously, hopefully it doesn't light my entire bridge on fire. Can slabs burn? I don't know, but I'm willing to risk it, I guess. Cheap resource. And I obviously, I don't have enough of these guys yet, but I, uh, I will get some more if it's, if this actually looks good. So let me kind of come around here. I only have six of them, so I'll have to grab a lot more. I could go with this color, although I'm feeling this color is going to be better. Ooh, that's actually not a bad color. Hmm. Dude, what color do I want to go with here? You know what? Let's go with that one. Okay. Let's just like strip that once. And then we'll do this. And then we'll light it up. And then I guess, uh, I guess we'll wait. And if at the next segment, oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. All right, that was a horrible disaster. Back to the drawing board. All right, I've been informed by Mandolin that apparently putting lava instead of a cauldron might be able to fix our situation. So we're going to give that a shot. So thank you to Mandolin. But if it doesn't work, then I take it all back. So it's a good thing that we actually have a lava farm here in the factory where I've got tons and tons of buckets of lava just waiting to be utilized over here. So I'm just going to grab like 9, 10, 11... 12 buckets that sounds right that sounds right okay let's see if this actually works oh did that did i light anything up hold on does that light stuff up oh it does okay now we now we wait wait because so far so far so good that's a pretty good job lighting up the side of the bridge but I'm not going to lie to you. I'm mighty suspicious on this bridge not lighting on fire. Is that actually going to work? Because there's a part of me who thinks like as soon as I turn my head, the things are going to be gone all up in flames. But it does have a little bit of an issue. I need to light up the middle of these things. And I think I have a little bit of an idea. I just don't know exactly how I want to make this idea work. So... Let me try to map out an idea for like how I'm going to light up the middle of the bridge. I was thinking like braziers hanging from the ceiling, but hanging a brazier that far down, uh, that might be a bit much, huh? I'm going to see what that would look like first. So I solved our issue over here by putting in a little bit of lava inside some of these cauldrons right here and putting the carpet on top. I think it's very, very smart. 
so now i've got the hanging lights i've got the bridge completely lit up i've got this bridge over here coming together and i'll show you guys something really really cool that i love to do over here the iron bars with the the light gray candles on them just to kind of give that really cool effect right here and then for these guys what i've been doing is pretty much placing an anvil right on top of there because the light still goes through the anvil being a tile block which is kind of nuts i didn't know that and then i just kind of keep on going and uh, get all the candles in place but we're almost on the bridge now so i can actually start mapping out how i want to have the doors placed in here check out this immersion got our braziers hanging up from the roof now which looks beautiful kind of created a little bit more of a limp over here built some braziers in here which are going to do a little bit of glass work making it like kind of come up above there uh into like some uh, trailing smoke i might do some uh, smoke effects up here too but i'm not sure if that's going to be super necessary also built up the doors i think these doors are like kind of like the miniature version of the door out here and then these are going to lead off into different areas so this might like lead into like more of like uh, since there's a deep dark over here, this is probably going to be a deep dark build in behind this door. And on this side, there's a little bit more of a, like a giant open chasm. This might be like kind of like a du uh, Dwemer, Balmor, Skyrim inspired area over here. Because I do know like if I go down from here, there's a massive cave that I showed in the episode before this. The Kingdom of Chains for those of you guys who do and uh, do not know been working on the side of this a little bit better and kind of putting in a lot of my shapes here let me gam up for you guys it's a little bit washed out but it does add in a little bit more texture in here now i just need to kind of hold the braziers in place so it looks like it's actually meant to be there but so far i'm absolutely loving this place i still need to work on the forge right here and then i have my center area I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything with this area exactly. I'm just going to kind of leaving this for now. The forge right here is probably going to be elevated a little bit. And then we're going to build the Dwarven City back here. Fun. So as you guys know, since we're going to be building the Dwarven Kingdom back there, I want to build a bridge that's going to go into the Dwarven Kingdom over here from this peninsula. This forge is a little bit too close for that to happen. So what I think I need to do is I'm going to be taking this forge and basically pushing it all the way back to this area, which means that I'm probably not going to do anything with that central area. So let's go ahead and start doing that and see if I can work out something cool for this forge. So for the forge, I'm kind of feeling like I might go with a little bit of a bowl shape here. So on the inside, I'm just going to kind of start off with this block. I think it's a little bit darker for the tough. Work away all the way around here. I do have the beacon that comes through here, so I will have to kind of hopefully not cover that up. I'm hoping to put lava in here anyway, so that doesn't get affected. But if I come inside of here like this, and then I have this, I, I hardly ever use this chiseled. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure, but let me see if I like the shape here first. It is a bit strange. I plan to also use a bit of blackstone to make it look like there's some soot in here as well. But let's try this out uh, and see what this looks like. And then just remove this underneath here. And then I'll put some walls in place too. And look at, like it's actually being held in place. Okay. So that looks a lot better than I thought it was going to look. If we add some support columns in here as well to kind of help out with this, I think we're on to something. And for support columns, I can either go with Polish Tough, which I think actually works out really nice but what about an anvil mm, yum weird i don't know okay whoops put that guy back maybe anvils could go in the corners potentially make that work out a little bit better or maybe that just looks stupid to have something alternating in there huh not a fan of it so i think that the walls worked out really nicely here i need to make a way to actually get up into the forge now so we're going to need a little bit of a step staircase 
We could potentially use this whole area here. I wonder if I could maybe use a little bit of the basalt. Hold on. To kind of like really bring this out a bit. So we can use the basalt to kind of have like where the staircase is going to go. If I can grab the basalt. So that might look really nice like right here. And right here. If I bring that up, it almost looks like it's like holding the forge in place. And then of course, like right here in the center area, we'll make our little staircase. So we can kind of bring this down and out. So I don't know how I want to do this exactly. Um, Maybe I bring it in like this kind of deal. Because I don't really want to block this. I want that to look very open. So you still have that sense of like, Oh, there's like a little thing under there. Okay. I like that. Might be one of the best sounds in the game. Over here at the lava farm and uh, just kind of taking it in right now. And um, I feel like I can fall asleep right now. I'm hoping two shulker boxes should be enough to fill our entire forge here. And I also have a bunch of glass so I can make some really cool effects with a bunch of smoke and stuff. But let's go see what that looks like over here. That was uh, two shulker boxes worth of lava. And uh, all I managed to get done there was the outer rim of the first layer. I'm going to need a lot more lava. Layer one, done. But come to think of it, I've never actually tried putting lava above more lava. If you guys know of a way to do this better than the way I'm about to do this, let me know in the comment section down below because... I'm going to do it strip by strip basically up here. So I have something to place the lava up against, but I've actually never placed lava above lava, but back to the factory layer one done. But come to think of it, I've never actually tried putting lava above more lava. If you guys know of a way to do this better than the way I'm about to do this, let me know in the comment section down below because I'm going to do it strip by strip basically up here. So I have something to place the lava up against, but I've actually never placed lava above lava, but back to the factory. All right. So add a little bit of smoke to our forge over here. Building up a little bit of a bridge over here, although this bridge is looking very incomplete because this bridge is actually going to go into the facade of the Dwarven Kingdom over here. So I'm just going to kind of leave this bridge over here fairly open-ended. But we've got a little bit of the lip here, and I want to work out a little bit of the texturing on the floor, making an actual pathway leading from these stairs to the entrance of the Dwarven Kingdom. And I would like to work my way into or out of the Dwarven Kingdom into this hallway up here where I have a really cool floor design that I really want to work out and then I can get these other doors in place and I can create more of that immersion as we work our way inside of the Dwarven Kingdom. And I know you guys are asking, yeah, these walls, well, these walls will get decorated. I'm getting there. Isn't it kind of crazy what you can get done with just a little bit of texturing? So we have a little bit of foot traffic coming in here and then I've basically blended it on out But I want to show you guys a little bit of a really cool light and how I'm working on the lighting of this area And making it look a little bit more natural as I go So you'll see I got like these little pressure plates right here And I think that this goes really well with the design. So by digging down a few blocks Placing down my sea lantern placing two glass on top and then throwing on my pressure plate it's Like a really good way to light up this area really happy with the way that's turning out over here i'm probably going to work in a little bit of uh smooth basalt for like the, the soot coming out of the forge itself i think that'd be really nice as well and then as i work my way back to this edge right here this is a little bit more rough not walked on type train except for like where the braziers are at it's a little bit lighter because it's supposed to be like like the light is bleeding out from the braziers and then casting a little bit of a shadow down here, which I think works out really well. On the way out of here, you can see I've done a little bit of work here, but I'm trying not to get ahead of myself too much because I do need to work on a few things up in this like landing area. Even though I did put in a little bit of a strip here, 
eat this this strip it, it's not gonna stay here i don't even know i basically wasted my time doing this but i like everything that i got going on so far but yeah hopefully that light helps you guys out yo check out these doors hello got some very thick door action going on here ain't nothing getting in here except for the fact that it's wide open so i guess i'm getting in here but i love these doors i think these look awesome coming in from over here and taking a look at look at them from over here i think that these look so good and they definitely add like a, a really cool like thickness and uh they look heavy you know they look heavy but yeah, I'm going to leave these guys open. That way I can still fly in here and see the forge in behind us. I want to do the exact same thing, but like right here. But those ones will be a little bit different. I'm thinking grindstones, so I'm able to slide those in and out. Now, last episode, I did have you guys name a bunch of wolves. So I think it's about time to get those wolves a little bit of a home. So let's do that. And with all that out the way, with all of your guys' help, I now have all of the wolves fully named up. Remember, the little ones are actually going to stay babies forever because I have name tagged them using the mod that I have. And then I also name tagged a little bit of the bigger ones too. There are some wolves that are yet to be named. So if you want, name them in the comment section down below. And I also have three skeleton horses that need to be named. Only one of you guys wanted to name a skeleton horse. So we got Sparky over here. But I have these three additional skeleton horses that need a home inside the castle somewhere. But with that all said and done, I think that's all the time that we're going to have for today's episode. If you guys haven't done so already, please leave a like. Consider subscribing if you guys want to see some more. Because in the next episode, I've got big plans. And in the meantime, maybe check out one of these videos.